Hello everyone, welcome back to another week of uh, lectures. In this week, we are going to study section 10.3 and 10.4. The first section 10.3 is about polygons, perimeters, and tessellations. Okay, let's see what are the objectives for these sections. Um, the first objective is to name a certain polygons according to the number of the size. Uh, to recognize the characteristic of certain uh, quadrilaterals and also to solve problems involving a polygon's perimeter and then we're gonna find the sum of the measures of a polygon's angles and finally we will understand the tessellations and their angles measurements or requirements okay let's go over the first slide um, this uh, slide is about polygons and perimeters. So we are trying to get what are the definitions of those. Polygon is any closed shape in the plane that is formed by three or more line segments that intersect only at their endpoints. So that is the definition of polygons. For the regular polygon, it has the size which all the same length and the angles of all the same measure. And the perimeter of a polygon is just the sum of all the length of its size. So we sum, we add all the size together. Okay, let's take a look at some example for regular polygons. Um, we know that if I have a three size then I should get a triangle. So three side is a triangle. And you see that the sum of all the angles of a triangle is 180. Uh, that, that was the materials that we learned from last week. If I have four sides, then I have something called a quadrilateral. If I have five sides, then I have pentagons. Five sides. Six sides is, is called hexagons. And then seven sides, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that is heptagon. And then eight sides, that should be octagon. So those are the special names for three to eight sides. Triangle, quadrilateral, pentagon, hexagon, heptagon, and then octagon. Okay, let's focus more about the quadrilateral four sides. We have some special uh, figures for the four sides. The first one is is called parallelogram. Okay, this is four side, and this is a quadrilateral. Now, for this special parallelogram, we have both pairs of the opposite sides are parallel. So this side is parallel with this side. The two opposite sides, they are parallel. Right here, they are parallel. And then the opposite angles, they have the same measure. So these two and these two, right? Opposite, opposite. They have the same angle. The next special four size is rhombus. This is a special parallelogram with all the sides having equal length. So in this case, the first one, only two sides top and bottom, they are equal, they have the same length. And then the two sides on the, the left and right. But for the rhombus, all the four sides, they are equal. And then the two opposite sides, they are parallel. So these two are parallel, these two are parallel. Rectangle is the one that you saw a lot, right? From uh, middle high school or elementary school. Uh, rectangle is a, also a parallelogram, but they have the four right angles. So four right angle. The right angle is the angle with 90 degree. And we use a special square notation to represent for the right angles. So the parallelogram with the four right angles is a rectangle. 
And then because the rectangle is a parallelogram, the opposite sides are also parallel and they have the same measure. One and two, and then that's three and four, they are also parallel and they are equal. The square is also a parallelogram. Um, in this case, all the sides they have equal the length and each angle again it's also 90 degree. Now uh, for the square it is special that be, uh, comparing to the last one because all the sides are equal. The rectangle only two sides are equal. The other two sides they are different. But for the square all the, the four sides they are all equal. And the square is a regular quadrilateral. Trapezoid is also a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. So it's only one pair of parallel sides. The other two sides, they are not parallel. Only one pair. In this case, the top and the bottom. So we have a, the total of five special uh, quadrilaterals. And we have a five special name with the five special characteristics that we are learning in this section. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Example, the sum of the measures of a polygon's angle. Now, we have a, a special formula to find the sum of all the angles of a polygon. The sum of, a, of all the measures of the angles of a polygon with n size is n subtract 2 together multiplied by 180. So no matter how many, how many sides that you, you may have, you may have 3 sides, 4 sides, 5 sides, heptagon, octagon, 8 sides, and so on. n is the number of the sides that you have. All you do now is to find all the measurement of the angles. We take that number of the sides subtract 2 and then multiply together by 180. So for example, they ask you to find the sum of the measures of the angles of the octagon. Now octagon, we know that octagon has 8 sides. So n is 8. So using the formula n subtract 2 multiply by 180 degree, a subtract 2 multiply by 180 or 1080 degree is the sum of all the measures of the, um, the octagons. Okay, the last objective is about tessellations or tilings. Now, a pattern consisting of the repeated view of the same geometric figures to completely cover the plane, leaving no gaps and no overlaps. So now we may have something some geometry shape and this shape here is a pattern it's consisting of all the pattern and the pattern is formed by using all the repeated view of the same type of geometric figure it could be a, a, um, a rectangle a square a polygon um, an octagon and so on and they use the same repeated square and then they they put next to each other they form into the whole plan leaving no gaps or no hole, no overlapping in between. And then the sum of the measures of all the angles that come together at the each vertex or the point of intersection between the line, the size, is always equal to 380 degree. And then most restrictive condition in creating tessellation is that just one type of the regular polygon may be used. And then if you just have one type of uh, the regular polygon, maybe you, then we may have um, um, this example here. Now, in this example, we are using a, um, two types of polygon to form into um, a tessellation. For example, in this case, the first case, we use two types. One is this figure, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this one is the octagon. And then you see the little square here. 
So square, 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 and then octagon, 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 and so on. So we are placing the octagon together with the square uh, to form to cover all the plane without any gap, any hole, and no overlapping in between. And this is an example of the tessellations. Now, um, the last example explain why a tessellation cannot be created using only the regular pentagons. Okay. All right. So, pentagon is what? Go back to the definition of pentagon. Pentagon has five sides, right? One, two, three, four, five. Now, if I'm placing only the regular pentagon, only the pentagon, if I'm placing them next to each other, I know that each pentagon has 180, sorry, 108 degree. Now, if I'm placing all three of them together to form into a tessellation, I know that I still have the gap in between because together all four all three of them if you add them together we don't have enough 360 degree one of the requirement is all the angles of the vertex of the tessellation has to be the sum has to be what 360 degree and the pentagon three of them each has only 108 so you add them together, you still have the gap in between, and by the definition of the tessellation, you cannot have a gap in between the, the figures. Or you can apply and subtract two, one away to find the measure of its angles of a, re a regular pentagon. And you see that the pentagon has five side, five subtract two, multiply by 180, and then you divide by five because you just want to figure one angle the pentagon has five angles, one, two, three, four, five. So divide by five, get you one angle, which is 108. And you add 108, three of them, one, two, and then three, one, two, three. We still have a gap here because the requirement is all of them needs to be 360 degree, but uh, we don't have enough 360. Okay, so that is the end of this section 10.4, um, 10.3. And then the next section 10.4 is about the area and uh, circumference. Okay, there are two objectives for this section. Use the area formulas to compute the areas of the plane regions and solve the applied problems. And then use the formulas for circle circumference and the area. Alright, so let's take a look at the area of the rectangle and the square. This is a well-known formula that we have been using in the past uh, in the lower level. Um, in your high school, in your middle school, I believe you all uh, have seen this before. Okay, for the rectangle, we know that the rectangle have the length and the width. Now, the area of the rectangle is found by the formula the length times the width. Area equals the length WL times the width W. For the square, the square has all the four equal sides. So we call one of them is the S. So again, the two sides multiply together to get you the error s times s or s square. So those are the basic formula to find the area of the rectangle and the square. Okay, in this next example, we are trying to solve an area of problems. Now, <clears throat> you decide to cover the path, so in bricks, find the area of the path. Okay, so this is a given area. 
and you are looking to find the area of that. Now, how can I find the area? Well, we learn how to find the area of the rectangle of the triangle in the last slide. Here, the area of the rectangle is the length times the width, and the area of the square is just one side square because they are all the same size. So we can use either uh, the two formulas to help us to find the area of this um, figure. Okay. Well, it's simple to find the area for this problem. Now, there's no formula to find the area of this L shape, but we can use the rectangle formula and a square formula to find the area of that. Now, how do I do that? In order for you to find the area of the whole shape, uh, the, the L shape, I can just maybe draw a line here, divide it, so that I can find first the area of the upper portion and then the area of the lower portion. Now, it's simple. Because this one here, this upper portion, is what? It's just a rectangle. And then we have another rectangle right here. And that should be simple. Now, because this, this is 3 feet, therefore, this one is also 3 feet. Because this is a rectangle, and the two opposite sides, they are equal. Okay. So let's, let's find, let's call this, this is figure number 1 which is this portion. Now let's find the area, the area of that um, portion number one. Now this is a rectangle. The area is the, the length times the width. I just show you that. The length is this horizontal distance. And we know that this is 13, another three more, so it's 16. 16 feet okay multiply the width is this distance which is 3 feet 3 feet so 16 times 3 that is 48 feet times feet give me feet square or 48 square feet this is the area of the upper portion and now I can do the same thing, find the area of the second portion. Okay? So let's just find the area of the second portion. Well, that's also simple. The length times the width. Let's just call this the length, which is 6, right? 6 feet. And then the width is a smaller, which is 3 feet. And then together you get what? 6 times 3, that's 18. Fit times fit, square fit. And then remember the problem asks us to find the area of the entire uh, shape. That's not the U, the U shape. So we can find the individual portion and then we can just sum them up, add them up together to get you the entire area. So the, the area of the um, um, the total area is just the summation of 48 and then 18. And that's 48 plus 18, that should be what? 48 plus 18, that is 50, 66. And that is fit square, fit square, fit square. So the total area is 66 fit square or square fit. So we apply the area formula for the shape that we know and then we apply that to the uh, any given shape and we can just add them up all together to get the, uh, the overall uh, area. <coughs>
the next uh, topic is the area of a uh, of a parallelogram. Now recall that a parallelogram is a quadrilateral. It has four sides, and a special characteristic of the parallelogram is that the two opposite sides they are parallel. The two opposite sides they are parallel and they are parallel and they are also equal. Now we can find the area of a parallelogram with the high h and the base b by the formula is a simple formula we take the base times the high okay so the base times the high is the area of the parallelogram the high of a parallelogram is the perpendicular distance between the two of the parallel sides it is not the length of the side okay so make sure you draw the perpendicular distance make sure it has a right angle okay per perpendicular between the two distance uh, between the two parallel sides and it, it makes sure that it is not the length of the side okay all right let's try another uh, example of that problem okay so in this example we are looking to get the area of the parallelogram so we are given a parallelogram here we have the uh, the two sides the two opposite sides and one has a centimeter and then we have the perpendicular distance this is the height this is the height of the parallelogram and then again this is the base of the parallelogram B and it is H so according to the formula that I just showed you in the last slide the area is equal to the base times the height or in this case it's just what it's just 8 times 4 8 centimeter times 4 centimeter is 32 centimeter square so the area always had the square of the unit okay let's go over the next example the next one is about the area of a triangle now the area A of a triangle with the high H and the base B is given by the formula so let's say I have the triangle the triangle is the um, the shape with three sides okay this is the base the high the area is given by one half the base multiplied to the height so that is a famous uh, uh, area trying of the uh, triangle formula one half the base times the height okay let's move on to the next example Using a formula for triangles to find the area. Now, find the area of the given triangle. It's right here. All right. So we know that this is the the dimensions for the triangle: ten point five meter, fourteen meter, and then sixteen meter, and then ten m, ten meter. Now. The perpendicular distance, this is the height of a triangle, and this one is the base of the triangle. So we know that the base is 16 meter here, and then the height is 10 meter, which is this one. And therefore, B is 16 and H is 10. And then using the formula for the, the, uh, the triangle, A is one half the base and the height, and then one half the base is 16, the height is, is 10. Together, we will get what? 80 meter square. Meter times meter give me meter square. Okay, the last, I think uh, we are almost done for this section. The next topic is the area for trapezoids. Now, the area A of a trapezoid with parallel bases 
a and b and with the high h is given by the formula so recall that the trapezoid is again is a four size figure and we have the trapezoid is the uh, the uh, the uh, the figure geometric figure with the two sides that are parallel so this side here the top and in the bottom they are the two parallel lines and in the other two they are not and then again the perpendicular distance between the two parallel lines is the height of the trapezoid and then you can see that if I draw the diagonal line from D to B then I can see that I have what? I have two triangles and then in order to find the area of the whole trapezoid I can just find the summation of the two triangles and then adding them together and then get the overall area of the trapezoid now the area of the um, um, the bottom triangle is one half the base which is A the high is H now and then the top one again one half the base is B and then the high is also H unit and then together you can you can summation you can sum them to get the summation of one half H A plus B so the area of the trapezoid is one half the high one half multiply with the high and then multiply with the summation of A and B and A and B are the two parallel lines okay let's try one example of the area of a trapezoid alright so we have this, this example we have the uh, the trapezoids. I know that this is a trapezoid because there are two lines they are parallel, and then the other two sides they are not parallel. And then we can see that the high is 13 feet, and then A we call that a shorter side, 32 feet. B is the longer one, 46 feet. So the high is 13 feet. The lower base A is Let's just call it A, 46 feet, and then the other one I call it B, 32 feet, right? A, B, A, B, and then the high. And using the formula for the area of a trapezoid, one half the high multiply A plus B. We have everything, so plug that in, you should get 507. So add them and then multiply fit and fit give me square fit so that's how you find the area of a trapezoid the next topic is about a circle circle is another uh, popular geometric figure that we should learn in this course and you can apply this to many other math classes we are dealing with a lot of circle problem a circle is a set of the points on the in the plane equally distant from a given point or the center. The radius R is a line segment from the center to any point on the circle already in a given circle have the same length. Okay, same radius. The diameter D is a line segment to the center whose the end point both lie on the circle and it, it is twice the radius. So that the diameter is double of the radius. And then all the diameters in a given circle all have the same length. Okay, let's take a look at that to see how the circle looks like. So this is the circle problem. Okay. We have the... Um, the circle here and we are asked to find the circumference of the circle with the diameter of 40 yards the diameter is what the line that going through the center of the circle and it's connecting the, the other two points on the circle 
So it had to go to the center of the circle. And then it's ending at the two points that are also on the circle. So the whole thing here, D is 40 yard. To find the circumference of the uh, circle. How do I do that? How do I find all the length of the circle? Well, there's a formula for that. The formula to find the circumference of the circle is pi r. Pi d, sorry. Circumference is equal to pi d. Pi multiplied with the diameter. Pi is a f the famous pi number. It's equal to 3.14. And d is the diameter. In this case, it's 40 yards. So we have everything. 40 yards times pi, 40 times pi yards. And then you can you can use the scientific calculator to find uh, the answer for that. So I take um, 40 and multiply by pi, and pi is the number here. So shift pi will give me that, and then they get 125 point. Seven. Okay, another example. This is the problem using uh, the formula of a circle area. Which is better by a large pizza with a 16 inch diameter for $15 or a medium pizza with an 8 inch diameter for seven point five dollar so a lot of the time you went to um, a store in the past right and you you was choosing between which one you should buy they have a lot of prices a lot of promotion and they said that okay you should buy the large visa uh, 16 inches is only fifteen dollar and the medium one is only eight inches and it's only seven point five. Now we are not really sure which one is really uh, on sale. So in this question, we can actually find the price for each end of the visa, and we can we can make the conclusion, and we can apply the formula to to do that as well. So the better buy is the pr the better buy is the visa with the lower price per square inches okay so between the two um, the two promotion that I have here the one with a lower price per square inches then let's go with that okay now the radius of the large pizza is 8 inches and the radius of the medium pizza is 4 inches the last pizza D is 16 so the radius is half of that or 8 the small pizza has the diameter of 8 inches so the radius is 4 is half of that now we also know that the um, the area of the circle is the formula pi r square area equal pi r square pi again is 3.14 r is the radius and then we can apply directly the formula pi r radius is 8 inches and this is here and together 64 pi inches or 201 inches square inches and then the same thing here the medium pizza you can find the uh, area pi r square pi 4 inches square equal 16 uh, square inches or 50 square inches And then the next thing, for each pizza, the price per square inch per square inch is found by dividing the price by the area. Okay, so for the large pizza, 
they claim that the large pizza is fifteen dollar, and the large pizza has two o one square inches. If you divide that, you get what zero point zero seven dollar per square inches or seven cents per square inches. And then for the price for uh, per square inch for medium pizza. The price is seven point five dollar, and then the the area sixteen pi divide that you get zero point fifteen inches. Now which one is 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 better? Well, this has a lower price. The larger visa has a lower price comparing to the other medium visa. Or you should buy the large visa because that is the better price. Okay, so that is one application for the circle. Um, whatever has the uh, smaller price per inches, uh, per in uh, square inches, is the uh, uh, the better price for overall. All right, so that is the conclusion for this uh, section, and. That is the end of section 10.4. Okay, thanks for watching.